So we've got um, Pauline operations which do something with our, our digital signal. And in this case, there are seven different operations, but really only four, two, and the other three are related to three of the others. So the first one is an AND operation. And the best way to show you how these things actually behave is by something called a truth table. All right? So the truth table is where, if I look at an AND gate, I've actually got two inputs. So I list the two inputs and every possible state that those two inputs can make. So I'm going to call my two inputs A and B. And I'm going to call my output Q. Okay. So I've got my two inputs A and B and my output Q. Now to show you that, I'm going to show you the symbol for a, an AND gate. So the circuit symbol for an AND gate is simply that. with my two inputs A and B there on the left and my output Q on the right. Okay, so it looks like a D but I've got two inputs on the left and one output on the right. Now, A can take, how many different states can it take? Two, two can't it? Zero and one. So I'm going to use zero and one as my, um, as my two ways of representing the states. So that would be a low voltage, that would be a high voltage, or an on or an off sort of thing, okay? And B, well, the different combinations of that, I can have A being zero and B both being zero. I can have A being one and B being zero as well. So they're two different combinations. But now what if B is one, I have the same 0 and 1 for the other two. So I've got a total of four different combinations that my um, inputs can be. Okay, so four different input states. And it's got to be one of those four. That's, all, that's it. It can't be anything other than that. And for an AND gate, well, now we can sort of talk about true and false. Sorry, that was one of the other ones I didn't put on the list. True and false being true being one, false being zero. I could talk about it as a truth statement, hence the true truth table. Um, and it might make some sense as far as English. So if A and B are both true, then the outcome is true, hence the name AND gate. So if A and B are both one, the outcome will be one, or the output will be one, okay? But that is the only time that that'll be one. Otherwise, it is so if A and B are both true, it is true, otherwise it is false. So if A and B are both one, it's one, otherwise it is zero. So the truth table for an AND gate is as such. Okay? Now, alright, so that's an AND gate. The other type of gates are The other type of gate is, or another type of gate, is an OR gate. So with the AND gate, it was true when both A and B were true. In this case, it's true when both, uh, when A or B are true, or both of them. Okay, so if one or the other is true, the output is true. So that one's true, so the output's true. That one's true, so the output's true. Well, both of those are true, so the output is still true. But neither of these are true, so the output must not be. Okay? And an OR gate has this symbol. Okay, so it looks a bit like the AND gate, except it's got a curve on the inside, the left part there. Okay, so the symbol for an OR gate is like that. That's for a two input OR gate, and that is its truth table. And you can sort of follow with its, the natural language of it. You can say A or B. If A or B is true, then it's right, it's okay. All right. 
right? Um, okay, now the, the other version is something called an XOR. Now XOR is exclusive OR and it's civil, is very similar to the OR gate except you've got an extra line and it's the input side. Okay? However, it's um, truth table, so it's function, it's operation, is a little bit different. So basically what XOR means is exclusive. So if one or the other is true, then the output is true, but not if both are true. So the only difference between the XOR and the OR is when they're both logic one, the output is zero. So another way you can think about this is that if the outputs, uh, sorry, if the inputs are the same, the output is low. If the inputs are different, the output is true. Okay, so if the inputs are different, if you've got one or the other but not both, um, then the output will be true or high. Okay? So all of these gates, they do have uses. You can um, probably think of an example um, on your own. Leave that up to you as an exercise to think of a real world example where you might have some kind of, you're doing this logic, like if I've got money in my pocket and I need to go to school, then I catch the bus. So that might be an end statement for those two Boolean uh, yes or no kind of questions. So if you've got a yes or a no kind of question, or true or false, then you can do some um, you can do some Boolean logic with it. Okay? We can apply it to sensors, like is there enough light on this sensor? And is it quiet enough on this sensor? Then make the cricket make a sound. Okay, so that might be a logic operation you might need to do where that would be an end. Okay. Um, okay, so they're the three sort of main ones, and there's a fourth one that follows on for the next rest of them. Okay, so the fourth one is quite different from these two in that it's only got one input, so the others have to have at least two inputs. This one has only got one input A. And it's called a not gate. Okay, so a not takes an input and produces an output, which is not what the input was. So if the input was true, then the output must not be true, which is false. Okay, so if the input is one, a zero, the output can't be zero. The only other option it's got is one. Okay. This has a special name as well. It's called an inverter. So an inverter is a type of circuit that, whatever it, the input is, it flips it to the other whatever the other state is. So if the input is logic high, it'll make the output be a whatever's opposite to that input logic state. Okay very often, quite often used, and built into a lot of gates in, uh, so we have an AND gate with the output being fed straight in through an inverter, and it's built in together, and we call it a NAND gate. Okay? So a NAND gate is simply an inverted AND, so this is the symbol for it, it looks like an AND gate, except I've got a little circle on the end there. And you kind of, if you remember it this way, if it's got the NOT on the output, it's a knotted output. So we run through an inverter. Okay? So if you think of that, looks like a knot in the rope. Uh, it's a pretty loose sort of association there. But uh, So the, the circle there means that this is an AND gate, an inverted AND. And I could make that by taking my AND and then passing it through an inverter. Okay? So if I took the output and that became the input of an inverter gate, and then that would be my NAND 
inputs. Okay? So these two are equivalent. Okay, so Q and Okay, now for remember for the AND gate, it was only true when both of these were true. But now I'm inverting it. So if I had, at this point here, this is my AND here. So actually let's put, call this midpoint C. So this is some intermediate variable. Okay, so that intermediate variable there is something that you can't necessarily see because it's going to be internal to this chip or internal to the, the, the logic gate itself but um, if you were to make this out of logic gates yourself you could actually measure that and see that it had this logic and so logic uh, point C is simply A and B so 0, 0, 0, 1 that's the logic table for an AND gate and a Q our output here is simply the inverted version of C. So if it's a zero, it's a one. And that doesn't change. If it's a one, then it becomes a zero. So this would be the NAND gate is NAND gates truth table. Okay? Now when you're asked to draw a truth table and the out showing the output logic, it's quite often convenient to draw the intermediate variables. Um, to show you how to arrive at that at the truth table but you don't have to necessarily so for a NAND gate I don't have to worry about the intermediate variable C because I don't even I don't necessarily even need to know that it's there okay so um, so that's a NAND gate. I'll leave it up to you to work out the, um, the truth tables for the NOR gate and the XNOR, but I'll show you the... Um, uh, I'll show you the symbols. So a NOR gate, it's very much like the OR gate except Got a circle on the end of it now, and an X, X nor. Likewise. Okay. So though those two, you could probably work out the truth tables for that based on the truth table of an OR gate. You simply invert the output. So where it is one, you make it zero.